somebody, it's time to give God a praise. <laughs> John Bell's the First Baptist Melrose Park, thanking and praising God for you being a part of our Wednesday noon Bible study. And I thank and praise God for you being a part of this these studies, especially, especially since we have not been able to meet in person. And we're trusting God that we will be able to meet in person for Wednesday noons at noon very soon. We don't know how soon, but as soon as it's safe, we plan to be back in the house every Wednesday at 12 o'clock, but we also plan to continue to stream these services to you. So pray for us that God will open those opportunities, reopen the doors during the week where we can do more than our 930 service on Sundays. But for now, remember, we do meet every Sunday, 930 a.m. And God has met us each and every time. And I thank him. I thank him and I thank you for making sure that every time the doors are open, many of you, make sure that you're in the place. God bless you and keep you. Thank you also for your continued faithfulness throughout this pandemic and even down through the years. This is First Baptist's 105th year of existence. This church was founded in the fall of, 20, of 1917. And now here we are in the winter of 2022. But God has allowed us to be this close to the completion of our 105th year. And also, this is another big year because this is our 20th year, myself and Lady Kimberly, as pastor and first lady here. And we stand on the shoulder of some awesome giants that have gone before that God used in a mighty way. And we thank and praise God for allowing us this length of time in the service of the Lord with such a phenomenal people and such a great church. So we're looking forward to 2022 being a great year. And the Holy Spirit shared with me just before the end of 2021 that 2022 is to be our year of restoration and revival. Restoration and revival. There are two sets of scriptures. I'm not going to read them because of time, but in Joel 2, Joel 2, Joel 2nd chapter, the 21st through the 27th verse, and, and, and I will share with you uh, the 25th verse because that is key, where God says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. That is so important. But there's the rest of that that you know we'll, we'll deal with as the Holy Spirit allows throughout the course of this year. And then in Psalms 85, Psalms 85, the sixth and seventh verses, and I will read that to you because uh, it's not that long, where the question is asked of the Lord, will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. It is so important to seek God for restoration, not just physical restoration. Yes, many of us need, you know, the finances or, or, or material things. And, and those in states and areas that have been devastated and destroyed, they need restoration physically. But we're also seeking God for spiritual, emotional, relationship, all of those other forms of restoration. And how many of you know God is more than well able and willing to do so? 
Amen. But the key is that we have to position ourselves. We have to uh, get into a place where God can bless us. Let me, let me set it up like this, if you will. When a person has surgery, or if there's a devastating injury or illness that hits, we go into physical therapy and we learn how to walk or how to do or how to eat or how to talk or how to do things for ourselves. Physical therapy. I've had physical therapy over the years for whatever things have ailed me. But with what we have dealt with in the last two years especially, but even beyond that, Many of us, most of us, probably all of us, need some form of spiritual therapy. You have physical therapy, you have, we need spiritual therapy also. Spiritual therapy enables us to move forward past the PTSD, past the trauma, past the hurts, past the pain, past the horrific memories, past the things that would debilitate and paralyze us and keep us frozen in a place where we cannot serve God, where we cannot move forward, where we cannot be blessed or even be a blessing to others. So it's important that we learn how to allow God to put us through spiritual therapy. And one of the things that I was uh, sharing with my wife, we were talking about something and I came to realize that there are so many, so many obstacles before us as a nation, as, as people. And, and I'm not even talking just race now, I'm talking everyone, People, black, white, brown, yellow, red, everyone has great challenges. We all have great challenges before us in this age, in this era, in the 2020s. Things that we cannot do by ourselves. We cannot hold this nation together alone. We, we cannot see our children with more blessings as opposed to less. There are things now that are in place where children that were just born in the last 10 years or 15 years or even the last 20 years, they have fewer rights now than we had when we were born, whether, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. In fact, some of them have fewer rights now than they had on the day they were born. There's so much going on that we need Christ. Christ is still the answer. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit shared with me that we needed to go into fighting mode, spiritual warfare mode. As I shared with the message on Sunday, which if you haven't viewed it, please go back and view that service if you weren't a part of it. Uh, in Numbers, the 13th and 14th chapters, the people of God, God told Moses to send 12 spies into the land of Canaan and into the promised land. And 10 of the spies came back with a terrible report. They talked about the giants in the land and how those giants were more powerful than the people of God. And they actually talked it as if the giants were more powerful than God himself. And only Caleb and Joshua, only Caleb and Joshua believed God. And the Bible says that they stilled or quieted the people before Moses and said, no, let's go up right now. We can take the land. We're well able to take the land. But the spies weakened the minds and the hearts of the people and they said, no, we can't do it. The giants are too powerful and we were in the giant sight and in our own sight as grasshoppers. We were like locusts, we were like cockroaches. We, we can't do this. And as a result, God was angry and told the people, since you didn't believe me, this is in Numbers 14, since you didn't believe me, but you believe the dreadful report of the 10 spies. Everything that you said, you've, 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 you've seen my power, you've seen how I got you out of Egypt, you saw the plagues, you saw me split the Red Sea, I fed you since you've been out here, I've given you water, I've done all these miracles, you don't believe me still. So, since you don't believe me, the things that you said I, would happen to you will happen. In other words, you're going to die in the wilderness, and everyone aged 20 and younger. That's why it's important to be good to our young folk. Amen. Everybody 20 and younger will get the promised land. They will enter the promised land. But everyone over the age of 20, even if you're 21, you're out of luck. You won't get in. You won't get to see it. Well, here's the thing. They did not have the faith to trust God. 
And that takes us into our lesson today. And I want to get it started right now. In 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter and the 12th verse, and we'll read from the NIV version. And it reads, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In this lesson, and we're going to go over the next few weeks in spiritual warfare and how to go after God and trust God and believe God for our blessings, for our restoration, for our miracles. Amen. Faith is the key. And in this first lesson, I want to focus on and emphasize the importance of our faith. That's the first weapon. That's the first weapon in our arsenal of spiritual warfare. Faith is not just believing God I, I needed a promotion on my job. I need a better job. I need more money. I need this. I need that. Faith is not about just getting the things in the material. Yes, you can believe God for those things, but don't treat God like Santa Claus. Amen. That's the danger. When we talk about that kind of prosperity mindset, that prosperity gospel, as they call it. No, that's, that's treating God disrespectfully. You know, Burger King, I want it my way. No, because no one ever in serving God, we never get it our way. It's always his. And I can give you, I can give you the word on that because Jesus Christ, when he taught us the model prayer, some call it the, the Lord's prayer, but whatever you call it, he said, thy kingdom come, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done because that prayer is addressed to the father and even when he prayed getting ready to go to calvary jesus said if it's your will take this cup away from me then he said no 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 nevertheless not my will but your will be done so we are to follow and seek god's will because listen god's will is perfect it may not be comfortable it may be it may be be, be, it, it may be something that we find distasteful at different times, but I promise you that's the safest place. That's the safest place to live in the will of God because God's will is perfect. And Romans 8 and 28, all things work together for good to us that love God and are called according to his purpose. Let me go further here. Faith is not just about believing to get more stuff and to increase our abundance. That's prosperity. Faith is defined for us in the word of God. And we learn in Corinthians 5 and 7 that we walk by faith, not by sight. No matter what we see, hear, or experience, we are to allow our faith to lead us, to guide us, and to give us what we know is the will of God in our lives. As Christians, fighting the good fight of faith is about spiritual warfare. And many people are surprised that we have to fight the good fight of faith every day. There are those of you who can testify that it's a fight, it's a battle most days to love folks that are unlovable, to get through the day and seeking to please God. It's not difficult, it's not hard to live holy if you wanna live holy, but it's a fight to do so. Because there's always that inner conflict. There's always that pull. There's always that temptation. And then many times we'll be in the presence of saints. And we'll even be in the presence of, just, I, I won't call them saints, but church folk. That will almost give you license where it's okay to cuss. It's okay to uh, act ugly. It's okay to smoke, drink, do this, do that like the world does. No, it's a fight. Because our flesh may want to go one way. But the Holy Spirit within us will pull us in the right direction. And the Holy Spirit will give us what we need. But understand that spiritual warfare comes about because the enemy is always tempting. Let me say this to you also. Just because you're tempted does not mean that you're not saved. As a matter of fact, temptation means that God is with you and that you are with God. And the devil is trying to do the same thing in our lives that he was trying to do against Jesus Christ when he tempted him those three times in the Bible. But even in spiritual warfare, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 tells us, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war 
after the flesh. And many people are surprised that we are constantly confronted by challenges in our lives, things that require more than our human capacity to handle or even sometimes understand. And this season that we've been in, this 21st century, uh, the 2020s so far, and, and, and even those who've lived the last 100 years, it has just been one thing after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. It has been one challenge after the other. And just think, just let's, let's just go back almost 100 years and we'll see from the pandemic of 1918 through the Great Depression, through Jim Crow, through segregation, police brutality, uh, I'm sorry, I, I almost missed World War I, Great Depression, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, Persian Gulf, uh, Desert Storm, 9-11, Afghanistan, uh, equal treatment under the law, education inequity, sick, cyclical poverty, where people are in just, you're born and you can't get out of the neighborhood because of the way things are set up, because you don't get the right schooling. The, 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 the schools, the education opportunities are not the same from zip code to zip code to zip code. And as a result, increased prison incarceration, increased crime, violence, gangs, drugs in certain neighborhoods where even though it's out in the open and even though it's public because it's generally on the news every night, every day in the newspapers, not many people are serious about putting an end to it. We are seeing all of these things that people are living with, people of God have to put up with. And the Bible tells us that we will encounter persecution and trouble because we're Christians. But the Bible also outlines what some would call good trouble. Amen. John Lewis uh, gave us that good trouble. But the Bible talked about good trouble even before John Lewis did, talking about suffering as Christians. And because of our relationship, our saving grace relationship with Jesus Christ. First Peter, fourth chapter, 12th through 16th verses. The Bible says, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange was happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or as a thief or any other kind of criminal, or even as a meddler. In some versions, it says busybody. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. And when we take a look, and this is what we're going to do next week, when we take a look at every personality in the Bible, when we look at those people that we meet that in the Bible, that we study in the Bible, we will see that they went through something. They went through persecution, they went through loss, they went through trial, they went through trouble. But the Lord, as Paul, as Paul says towards the end of his ministry, out of them all, the Lord delivered me. And this is what our faith is for. Fighting the good fight of faith helps us to understand that God is with us in our trouble and that it is through our faith and relationship with Christ, no matter what we encounter, no matter what we have to deal with, God is going to get us through. Amen. We'll pick this up next week. Pray with us. Pray for us. And let's pray for each other. We're praying for the bereaved families, those who are sick, who are shut in, those who are going through, those who have lost, those who don't know what to do next. There are so many things to pray for. And sometimes, uh, Lord, bless everybody. I remember as a child being taught, Lord, bless everybody. Lord, bless me. Amen. We have to learn how to just pray for everybody. Sometimes I just take the newspaper and just lay my hand on it and pray because everything in there, and there's more stuff out of it than in it. Lord, bless even the stuff I don't know about. Help those people that I don't know 
that are going through. And I promise you, even as you pray for others, God will bless you as well. Amen. God bless you. My time's almost up. Be with us next week, next Wednesday, as we go into the word of God. And we're going to examine the people of God and how their faith identified them as victors and overcomers because they were still fighting the good fight of faith. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and for your blessings. We thank you for this word and we ask that you will bless us, keep us, lead and guide us. Help us in all our ways, Father God. I pray for your people everywhere. Lord, bless everyone. Give Father God salvation to the sinner, deliverance to those in need, freedom for those that are in bondage, healing for those that are sick. Father God, give hope to those that feel hopeless. And most of all, Keep us, protect us, provide for us. Be with us, Father God, in all things. And we're ever mindful to give you the praise. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you and yours. Until I see you next week, may God bless you real, real good. This is your latest from FBC. Come one, come all. The doors of the church are open and we invite you to come on in. We are now live and in person every week and we are no longer asking you to RSVP to attend service. We just ask that you come with your mask on and ready to praise God. The food pantry is open on Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. for drive through pickup. We are currently looking for extra hands to assist with lifting boxes. Please contact the ministry leaders if you are available. Thanks to all who assist weekly, and God bless. Do you find yourself getting more shopping done online now more than ever? Don't forget you can support FBC every time you check out through Amazon. That's right, Amazon Smile is the same Amazon you know and love. But when you check out through Amazon Smile, they donate 0.5% of your purchase to First Baptist Church. So support FBC by shopping at smile.amazon.com. For all of these announcements and more, you can log on to our website to keep up with ministry, outreach, and other community information. We encourage not just for you, but for you to have your family and friends go to our social media platforms. Hit those like and subscribe buttons so you can get notified every time we are live. If you would like to be a blessing to First Baptist Church, it's easy via our giving platforms. We encourage you to email or call us with your praise reports because we know God is still manifesting his promises, even in a pandemic. God bless, and this is your latest from FBC.